one of the relevant areas that Islam emphasizes in economic organization is the aspect of an individual's right and social responsibility. Islam believes that the importance of harmonizing individual rights towards property and social responsibility is one way to achieve economic justice in economic organization. Islam provides assurance through state authority to protect human lives. They are extremely sacred and safeguarding human lives implies that an individual's right to religious faith, legal, security, mobility, participation in economic activities, election of society's leader, and fulfillment of individual basic needs. Without these rights, a society and ultimately humanity will perish. From an economic standpoint, this right is critical to a country's economic success and to improve social well-being. Private property right plays an important role to one of the sustainable development goals, which is Goal 11, that is sustainable cities and communities, which is aimed for moral development, promoting unity, social justice, fair and equitable distribution, circulation of wealth, and providing basic human needs. They are a call to action to end poverty and inequality, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy health, justice, and prosperity to ensure that no one is left behind. In this video, we are going to discuss five questions, which is what is the definition of private property rights in general? How does private property rights benefit social needs? What are the Islamic principles of private property and social needs? Why private property rights and social needs should be taken seriously in Islam? And lastly, what would happen if people did not execute private property rights and social needs? Property can be defined as all the things which can be possessed, acquired, and owned by individuals including tangible and intangible assets such as house, car, and copyright. The concept of property includes all forms of wealth and it plays a significant role in one's contract since property is the subject matter of ownership and all transactions that happen in our daily life. As a Muslim, we should be responsible for all the wealth and property that we have in this world. According to Sharia, wealth belongs to Allah solely, while mankind is just a visitorin which have their own responsibilities to make use of the property in an effective way. Private property right refers to one's right towards its own properties. Property rights give the owners or right holders the ability of freedom to do whatever they want with their private properties as long as it does not harm other people. This includes the activity of renting, selling for a profit, or transferring it to another party. As an example, a writer has rights over his written manuscript which other people could not steal or sell his manuscript without his permission. Property rights aim to build a moral community whose members make demands upon others related to rights and responsibilities. Property rights are not absolute but relative which makes it reasonable and propriety. This highlights the importance of knowing the legal and moral limits of using the property so that it can give benefits more than harm to the society. When human and social rights are superior to private property rights, the land and other resources will become morally non excludable which leads the property to reach its moral limits. In Malaysia, private property rights are well protected by law. Latest data shows that Malaysia is in the top 5 in the list of property rights index compared to other Asian countries with the rate of 85%. The Property Rights Index measures the degree to which a country's laws protect private property rights and the degree to which the government enforces those laws. This shows that Malaysia emphasizes private property rights. Some examples of private property rights protected by law are the right of intellectual property, land, and assets. For example, under the Patent Act 1983 and Patent Act 1994, it stated that anyone who falsely claims that a thing sold by him as patented commits an offence. It is also an offence if he falsely claims that the patent has been applied for when no such application was made or when the application has been withdrawn or refused. This offence carries a penalty of 15,000 ringgit or imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years or both. Now, let us move to the second question. How does private property rights benefit social needs? As we already know, private property owners have the right to do whatever they want as long as it does not violate the rights of others. When property rights are secured, they have much greater potential to utilize the property for better use. From an economic perspective, it expands property owners' opportunities for productive investment. Ownership of property must be protected in order to encourage labor investment. 
which benefits the nation's productive output and decreases the unemployment rate. These actions will lead to increases in the nation's income and help a lot in social need. Thus, when property rights are secure and economic freedom is available, human innovative thinking flourishes. Moreover, the right to use an asset, the right to appropriate returns from it, and the right to change its forms, substance, and location are all components of assets ownership. The right to transfer ownership to others at a mutually agreed upon price is the third component. And it is important because it provides the owner with an incentive to maximize the discounted future value of asset returns over an infinite planning horizon. This allows the owner to benefit from his property while also having the mobility to pursue other opportunities such as migration to urban areas which is an important way that can benefit for rural residents to increase their income. Other than that, the benefit of the right of private property to social needs is when there is efficiency in property utilization. By condemning hoarding and extravagant spending, Sharia encourages and promotes efficient use of property. The owner must use his wealth in ways that benefit him while not causing harm to society as a whole. Based on Imam Ashafi'i, it believes that when individuals exceed the point of moderation in their spending, even if they are spending on good and lawful things, their property should be placed in the custody of the state. This is because Islam places a high value on protecting people from harm. The Prophet said causing harm to others is not permitted in Islam. According to Islamic jurists, the property's honest obligation to fulfill his necessity commitments is one of his primary responsibilities. Thus, private property rights protect people from spending extravagantly that can cause harm not only for themselves but also other people. And lastly, the benefit of private property rights to social needs is through the imposition of zakat on wealth. Zakat is unique in the Islamic economic system. There are several conditions that determine if a person should pay zakat from his wealth or not, such as absolute ownership, growth from asset, and the nisab for each type of wealth. As a result, zakat can balance the economy in society. It can be levied on capital, trade goods, several types of business, agricultural produce, and cattle wealth. It is used to help the poor members of society get back on their feet as Islam places a value on community sustainability. It provides for the welfare of Muslims, particularly the poor and needy, in order to reduce economic inequalities and reduce the gap in income between the rich and poor, giving them a better chance of rising to higher socioeconomic level. Next, what are the Islamic principles of private property and social needs? The survival of a social order is dependent on all members of that society freely adhering to the same moral principles and practices. Islam, founded on individual and collective morality and responsibility, introduced a social revolution in the context in which it was first revealed. Collective morality is expressed in the Quran in such terms as equality, justice, fairness, brotherhood, mercy, compassion, solidarity, and freedom of choice. Islam holds that balancing individual right towards private property and societal responsibilities is one way to achieve economic justice in the economic system. In contrast to the individualistic nature of a liberal capitalist society, the right solution to this issue is crucial for achieving a stable and compassionate society. In Islam, al-milkiyah refers to the legal relationship between a human being and property that renders the property specifically attached to him. This relationship gives honor the authority to use the property for business purpose, excluding any legal restrictions. Ownership and other legal rights can only be established through an Islamic legal recognition of that right. These rights are derived from the sources of Islamic law. Legal rights are granted to the visitors of property who are entrusted to utilize property in accordance with Islamic teachings. Specific Islamic concepts involving money, property, taxation, charity, and the five pillars of Islam including zakat as well as prevention from horror and riba. It is on the basis of these fundamental principles that Islam has constructed its economic system. If it tolerates the minority of the rich, it imposes on them heavy obligations that they have to pay taxes in the interest of the poor and they are prevented from practicing immoral means of exploitation, hoarding, and accumulation of wealth. Muslim economists have the consensus that the main objective of Islamic economy is to establish social justice, elimination of poverty, tangible reduction in economic disparities, free society of corruption, society through the institution of zakat, interest-free system, and the 
ultimate goal is to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it is prohibited to transgress on private property that has been legally acquired. Islam has stipulated various punishment for theft, usurpations, cheating, and other injustices and ordered transgressors to compensate the owners of damaged properties. The state possesses the right to intervene, confiscate, and return properties which have been illegally acquired to their rightful owners whether those properties are mobile or immobile. In addition, the state may restrict or abolish legally acquired private property rights if equity and social welfare require it. Islam does not prohibit private ownership of property and allows individuals to benefit by engaging in economic activity through buying and selling. It is also incumbent upon those with property to contribute to social welfare through the redistributions of wealth and to contribute to economic stability through contributions to the state. This is reflected in several Quranic verses. Private property rights therefore comes with a duty or a social responsibility that must be met. Why should private property rights and social needs be taken seriously in Islam? Property is the main subject matter of ownership that occurs in every transaction. It is also ranked among the five essential values which the Sharia protects. The principle of private property and its right are clearly established in the Quran, even though it continues to be guided by specific factors to Islam and Muslims. Property rights are one of the most important elements in Islam that takes great care to protect so that it can fulfill the social needs. It is well defined in Islam and there are numerous categories of institutions in place to protect these rights. There are legal institutions, market institutions, financial institutions, monetary institutions, and political institutions to protect these rights. Moreover, there are different ethical and legal obligations in Islamic jurisprudence that regulate how private ownership is acquired. In Islam, the individual is given the primary responsibility for following the law of the rights of private property. So, it is not anticipated that the government will actively defend property rights because everyone should follow the law. Individuals are assigned the most significant role to use the resources and properties effectively. Therefore, individuals' rights, especially those related to property rights are protected strictly. Private property rights should be taken seriously in Islam because it falls under al-mal which is one of the elements in Makasid Sharia that we need to protect. The ban of riba and the requirement to pay zakat limit the use of whatever that an individual owns are examples of how Islam really concerned about private property as everyone has their rights to their own properties. As what Allah has said in Quran in Surah Al-Hadid verses 7 from this verse it can be understood understood that the ownership of al-mal is regarded to be a trust and the usage is a test of faith since the owner must use it accordance with the wisdom given by Allah. As a result, a person who is blessed with wealth can acquire the maximum level of virtue which is fala by spending from it within the limits set out by the Sharia. The Quran is also quite clear that the purpose of ownership and employment is not to acquire extravagant wealth and accumulate material possession but to use or spend it in a moderate way. Excessive spending is forbidden because it involves consumption that exceeds society's typical level. People are urged to be modest and to make the best use of the limited resources to get the blessings of Allah and to fulfill the Sharia. The Sharia promotes al-adl and ihsan in using private property to ensure all people have equal opportunities, not necessarily equal wealth, and to eliminate all forms of economic inequality, oppression, and wrongdoing.
property leads to injustice in society. When one does not aware of another private property, one may use the property as his own. Thus, opportunism may occur with individuals or groups exploiting the lack of private ownership. Because it is impossible to create a boundary around a song, other people can steal the music and lyrics. It is simple to replicate music tracks without paying for them using modern technology. So, it is not fair for the right owner who gives a full effort to make the songs by himself and in this term, the song can be considered as his own property because it falls under intellectual property and copyright while the other individuals or so-called opportunists has abused the honest private property right for his benefit. This is another example of the free rider problem which means that the price mechanism is less effective at pricing goods that can easily be stolen. Market failure can arise when private property rights are not clearly established or sufficiently enforced. That is, no solution can be found that fits the needs of all parties involved. A market failure refers to the inefficient distribution of resources that occurs when the individuals in a group end up worse off than they would have been if they had not acted in rational self-interest. In the case of a market failure, the overall group incurs too many costs or receives too few benefits. Economic results in the face of market failure depart from what economists often consider desirable and are rarely economically efficient. Traffic congestion is an example of an externality for which there is no solution. Since no company owns the roads, there is no incentive to charge higher rates during peak hours or lower rates during non-peak hours. Individual road users do not have distinct property rights. As a result, highway travel is allocated inefficiently. If the roads become private property, the owners will take matters on their part carefully with no unreasonable rates since they have rights and responsibilities upon the road. In conclusion, private property rights is crucial to be protected and each person should be aware of their rights so that no one will be oppressed. From these five questions that we have discussed, we can conclude that property plays a vital role in our life as the subject matter in our daily transactions. Most of our daily activities such as renting, selling, buying and borrowing will involve private property and right. In addition, we can acknowledge that wealth people who owns high value of private property contributes massively to help the poor and needy people by fulfilling their obligations to pay zakat at the rate of 2.5%. Private property rights also helps protect the long-term assets such as land and investment. Social well-being also being protected by the proper utilization of private property. In this discussion, it also highlights how Islam teach us to spend moderately and avoid to spend extravagantly as it may cause harm to other people and abuse their rights to own property, buying and selling the properties. Private property rights also can increase the household income as private property rights over urban and dwellings will encourage the society to work harder for a greater outcomes which can benefit society as a whole. There are some Islamic principles highlighted in this discussion to ensure the social needs have been fulfilled, such as the implementation of zakat to one's wealth, avoid usury, uncertainty, and cheating in the exchange of property. This is because private property rights aim to ensure that all people are treated equally and fairly to build a sustainable community and cities which promotes unity, social justice, fair, and fulfilling the obligations towards someone's right.